I wanted to just get a sense from you. What do you see having been in school? I mean, we're even graduating kids, not just in Alaska, but across America who are not literate, who don't have, I'm not talking about sixth grade literacy. I'm talking about even less than that. So do not have functional literacy for, for America, independence for America, um, being able to function, being able to reach their full potential. What are some of your reflections as somebody who's currently in the school system on literacy rates for students in America? The absolute most important thing is early reading and early learning, particularly before third grade. So hearing about this mass illiteracy epidemic spreading through Alaska is extremely concerning to me because I just learned that 60% of our students in at least Anchorage in kindergarten through third grade are well below, not just below, but well below the average, the national average, not necessarily even proficiency, but the national average for reading literacy. But once we get beyond third grade, our students start to catch up. So our fourth through 12th graders aren't as far behind. Most of them are along the national average of reading rates, but we still produce mass illiteracy throughout our states, which tells me that even though our fourth through 12th graders are in fact at the national average standard for their reading, so many of them have been so negatively impacted in their early education and their early reading development that it continues to produce mass illiteracy into adulthood. So targeting that kindergarten through third grade time, anyone below eight years old, and seriously focusing on reading literacy, proficiency, and even excellency in that time period is absolutely crucial to having a literate society. I think that's a really great point. One of the things that I've been focusing on is early intervention tools, making sure that we have the tools needed. We can't always count on parents or a stable home environment to really be pushing reading or excited about reading, um, being able to run to the library or get resources for reading. And so we really need to be able to equip our schools to have early intervention resources that work, that give good data, that give good support to the teachers, to the students, and then to whoever is taking care of the kids back at home in order to push early intervention so that they can target, they can see what's the gap, what's the need, and then how do we target it with resources to make sure that the kids have what they need in order to close that gap. And I think you're right that targeting it between pre-K and third grade is really the area that we need to focus on. And I really believe this has been a debate across America, what about funding for schools, funding for education, that funding does not need to go into more administration, more overhead, more uh, people at the top. It does not need to go into more buildings and more uh, sports yards. It does. It needs to go into these intervention programs. It needs to go into teachers who are performing, who we actually produce metrics so that we're actually putting money towards results. Because continuing to just fund a system and fund a a um, organization metric, if you will, that actually is just producing illiteracy doesn't work. Uh, as we know, government will always grow. The education system is part of government. Government will always grow. It will always consume resources. And unless its feet are held to the fire, it will not produce results. And we really need to focus on this, on producing literacy as a result, producing, I would say, a love for reading mm -hmm. as a result so that our kids actually have the skills and the strengths that they need in order to contribute to that marketplace of ideas, reach their full potential, be functioning in society, be equipped for the workplace so that we can have a strong America and a prosperous America in the future. Otherwise, we will produce class after class after class, and then ultimately a generation of non-readers. And how will those generations, you know, we talk about America's greatest generation, how will those generations of illiterate Americans even compete against China and Russia and these, these countries that obviously are adversarial to us and undermining us every chance they get, let alone countries that are right next door to us like Mexico that are, are competing with us in trade right now and competing with us even at the border. Yeah, absolutely. So I one of the things I was going to bring up is you said instilling a love of reading in children, getting not everyone has the opportunity to run to the library. And the thought that that put into my mind is, you know, the library here in Anchorage isn't safe. Like, yes. If I were a father, I would never let my child go to that library. We don't go to the library. We don't go to the library. It's and become a homeless readers. 
it's become a place filled with illiterate people. And so as we continue to produce society of illiterate Americans, this next generation of illiterate Americans is going to feed into that vicious cycle of making an unsafe, unproductive society in which reading is not accessible to the majority of people, furthering the problem even more. So something to note there, this is a vicious cycle. Illiteracy is not like literacy. Literacy does not self reproduce. It doesn't replicate. That's a replicate. great point. Literacy does not just happen. No. Illiteracy does in fact. It's contagious. It's cancerous. It replicates yes. on its own. The other thing that I would touch on is talking about education funding and how throwing money at the problem doesn't necessarily fix it. There's a very classic American saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I would kind of reverse that saying and apply it to funding and education. If it's still broken, don't act like it's fixed. You can throw money at a system that's working. If a system is working and in well order and producing results, and then you throw money at it, you're going to see an exponential explosion of production and success and excellence in your students in that system. If the system is broken and you throw money at it, you're just throwing your money out the window. So while I absolutely support increases in education funding, it needs to come into a fixed system that is already producing results with the resources that it has. That's a really great point. It's the a basic investment principle. You don't throw bad money after bad money. If your investment isn't producing results, you don't say, well, maybe if I up my investment, this one will do better. You end up changing your investment manager or reallocate your portfolio. And that's fundamentally what needs to happen as someone who has spent her career as a government watchdog, you actually can make changes in government without changing the money. You, you, you change the system, you change the process, you change the people, you change how funds are currently allocated in order to drive mission and results before you say, okay, now we're going to put more money into this in order to pump up the results. But right now we have to ask, what are we funding? Because what we're funding fundamentally is illiteracy. Exactly. If you're funding a system that is not producing results you want to see, why would you even put money in that? Why are you choosing to produce results that you then say you don't want to see? That's right. Something I think is encouraging is we do have models across the country. Just like Barbara was saying, there are schools that have actually succeeded and done this well, not only in fixing the pre-K to to third grade intervention and literacy challenge, but but fixing it pre-K to 12. And we have great models of school systems. They're not just in private schools. And as a side note, we've had not so great experiences in private school. And we've had some really great experiences in public school. So whether it's public school or charter school or homeschool or private school, because we've done them all in our family, um, there are great school systems that can be modeled across the country for whoever is listening to this, because this show is broadcast nationally, that we can model our school systems after and we can say, you know, we don't have to create this from scratch. We can look at who's done it before. There are plenty of people who've walked this path ahead of us and figured this out. Uh, reading didn't start in this century. Reading <laughs> reading has been going on for a while, and people have figured, the, figured out the tools for literacy a while ago. And we can model after what they've done and then improve on it for our culture, our context, and our communities and figure out what works best for us. But we don't have to reinvent the wheel in order to make this thing to make this thing work. So I would recommend that we look at these best practices and implement what works instead of trying to figure out something from scratch, or as you say, continue to invest in systems that aren't working. Right. And I think it's especially crucial with where we see America at today. One of the things that they try to teach us so often in college courses, especially anything pertaining to reading or writing or English in college courses is media literacy, critical thinking, analyzing a source, validating its credibility, being able to spot bias, being able to spot fake news. And if you can't even read, how Mm. can you think through truth? How can you reason, is this person lying to me? Is this a valid, how can you rationalize or apply logic to any argument? How can you lead a world nation, a superpower? How can you influence, impact, or take a stand on anything in America if you cannot even read and understand basic ideas? And what kind of a government that is supposed to be for its people would do such a disservice to its citizens as to cripple them from birth in such an important Mm. way? 
But yeah, by perpetuating illiteracy, it really leaves us open to indoctrination and disinformation and someone telling you what to think instead of how to think, which really disempowers the people.